Jane and this is my podcast about my handmade life. I'm on Instagram as Looney underscore and on Ravelry as Looney and I also sell um, knitting bags at Shop Looney and you can find links to all of my online places at looney.com. Um, we're in that time of year where I'm going back to the spooky lighting and I've just put some fairy lights up over here in an effort to make it seem less Halloween. <laughs> um, and I was kind of looking at them and thinking, oh, there's not many of them. They look a bit pathetic. <laughs> And I was going to turn them off, but I thought, oh well, hey ho, they can stay there. You can, um, you can let me know what you think of my efforts to make the factory look cosy. Anyway, welcome. It's so nice to be sitting and chatting with you again. Um, September seems to have passed by in a whirlwind. Um, I had quite a lot of work on, and there was Yarndale, and it was my birthday, and so I started the month by saying, see you next week, and it's October already. Um, and October is looking to be just the same. There's loads of fun stuff happening. I have two secret projects going on. Uh, one is my next pattern collection, which I'm not going to tell you about now. I shall just leave that hanging. And the other one is totally top secret and really exciting. Um, and so I may have turned back into a willy-nilly podcaster rather than a weekly one again. But anyway, we'll just see how the month goes along. I've planned everything out and so there should be time for everything, right? So yeah, good fun. In community news, we have a couple of things happening over in the Ravelry group. The first is the Stash Appreciation Society, which is a year-long track challenge to reinvigorate your excitement for the things that you already have. Um, and every month um, I draw a prize from the finished objects thread, and the winner for this month is 2B Loop 2, who is Judy from the USA. Um, and you've won a, a pattern to the value of $7, so get in touch with me and let me know which pattern you'd like. Um, yeah, so basically, it, as I say, it's a year-long challenge to, to use up some of your stash. So pop over there and chatter, and you can flash your stash, um, and... Yeah, just share what pro projects you're knitting from Stash. For the purposes of the prize draw, Stash counts as everything early, um, from 2016 and earlier. But we also have the oldest along running along, and I think that finishes. Did I say that finishes at the end of this month? I think it is. Now, the oldest along is an opportunity for you to pick up your oldest Stash or your oldest Whip or the oldest pattern from your queue, and to put some work into it and see if you can get some of your languishing whips finished or maybe enjoy some of your oldest stash. And I'm supposed to be working on a pair of socks. I've cast on all the socks this month, but more on that later. <laughs> In my stash, I had some wool mice. That was literally my various, very oldest stash thing. Um, and so I decided to cast on a pair of socks, which is what, whoops, just throwing all the needles down, which is what I had originally intended to do with this yarn. And yeah, so I'm just at the end of the heel. I should actually put that downstairs so I work on it. I'll put it with my, by my knitting chair and it might actually get some progress. I might stop casting on other socks and work on, on this. So yes, dig out your oldest whips and whatnot and pop over to the um, the Ravelry thread. Um, we're chattering in the Stash Appreciation Society chatter thread, so you can share what you're going to work on and then pop your finished ob objects into the oldest along thread. I'm going to have to check the finishing date for that because I've forgotten. And I think I had said that the prize for that was one of my Christmas bags, so that would be really fun. Cool. So we shall see you over there if you haven't joined in already. This is the sock segment. As I mentioned, I have been 
casting on all the socks. I have a load of half finished socks going on now. So I think I think last time I had showed you um I'd showed you this. And now it also has this. So I have finished my super long tube. This is Twisted Limon. Um, I'd already made a pair of tube socks with this yarn, so I didn't have a complete skein. Um, and I am making afterthought everything socks. This is just something that I keep in the car to knit on around and around or take to films and stuff. And so, yeah, I have a really long tube that I haven't done anything with yet. And rather than actually sitting down and cutting it up and putting in um, heels and toes and whatnot, I just started a new tube. I haven't put it in the car yet. I've only just cast it on. So I have it in my bag with all of my stuff. And I was really excited about sock blanks. So I decided to cast on a sock bank blank that I had recently added to my stash. So I've only just done the ribbing there. Um, I'm not quite onto, well, I like the ribbing to be a little bit longer before I get onto the, um, onto the stocking stitch. Yeah, and I am using the sock blank. So basically, if you've never used a sock blank before, it's a piece of knitted fabric that has been dyed knitted, and basically you unravel it as you knit, and I don't find that that squiggliness bothers me at all. Um, and it's just good fun. The Because it's been dyed on knitted fabric, it gives it a really good fun texture. Um, the, the dye comes out in an uneven way, kind of a speckly way. And I really liked the sock blank because it's got lots of fun colours on it. And it's knitting up. I'm just at the end of it. It's going to knit up really interesting. You know how I said that the Twisted Limon tube got a bit boring? Well, this one doesn't even have stripes, so goodness knows how that's going to go. But once I've, after I've shown it to you, I'm going to put this um, straight back into the car. So it's not like I'm going to be just sitting knitting on it all of the time. That's probably what I said about the last tube. <laughs> anyway, this came from... Kari Yarns. So it's one of their sock blanks. See this is the problem with the dodgy lighting time of year is things don't focus very well. Um, it's a superwash merino nylon and I'm really interested to see how long my tube is going to end up and how many pairs of socks I actually get out of it. I have some ideas about what I might do um, in order to make my tube go for as long as possible. Um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll give, I mean, 100 grams is definitely more than enough for one pair of socks. Um, so I might get a pair of socks and a pair of ankle socks, or who knows, we'll see. I'm knitting them on 64 stitches, so they'll be adult size socks, and... We'll see how we get along. Anyway, that one's going in the car, so you probably won't see it very often. I also decided to cast on a pair of birthday socks because, well, why wouldn't you? Um, and I had bought earlier in the year, I had treated myself to a skein of Nomadic Yarn, which if you're familiar with US self-striping yarns, you've probably heard of. Where's the tag on? Here we go. So yes, this was my birthday treat. There is a wait on, um, she dies to order, well she was when I ordered this, I ordered it back in February, um, and there was quite a long wait on the yarn, um, which is why I got my act together and organised it early. Um, but I just really liked the colours. This is called Bubbly, and I really like these sort of peachy, uh, well, apricotty, orangey colours in here. And so, yeah, I cast this on on my birthday and I have a bit of a sock going on. And then at Yarndale, I just roamed around and 
asked a lovely dyer what colour she would when I found, you know how they have those displays that have sort of the whole spectrum of colours, spectrum, rainbow, yeah anyway, she had loads of mini skeins there and I asked her which one, she thought that's not showing up very well, it's kind of an olivey greeny colour, so she picked out this one for me. And that came from River Knits, which was somebody that I hadn't heard of before. So that was quite fun. It was a good way to try out a little bit of yarn from somebody somebody new. Yeah, and I think I had also got some another... I got some other minis, but I really liked these because they seemed to have more, more depth to the colour. It was as if she'd um, over-dyed them, so they weren't quite so sort of flat and consistent so I thought that went in better with the with the rest of the sock yeah so that was my birthday cast on and I'm kind of looking forward to wearing those so yeah good fun I think that's all the socks that I've actually cast on so only three <laughs> actually no hold on that means that I have four pairs of unfinished socks on the go so yeah, that's not too bad, I don't think. Last time I saw you, I promised to talk to you about the new birthday yarn from Blackout Brushwork. And this came out last Thursday, so I had kind of wondered if it was worth still saying something about it, because a load of people have already reviewed it. And if you want to see my full review for this, you can go over to my blog where you can find the show notes for this podcast and all of that sort of rigmarole. Um... Yeah, it came out on Thursday, and I know that a lot of you will have already ordered this yarn. Um, but I thought maybe it was, because you can still get it, it hasn't sold out. And I think um, Brit Yarn haven't even put theirs on sale yet. So if you're still thinking about it, I thought mm, maybe I would just pop on and tell you um, what I thought of it. Um, so brushwork this year it, it's quite special actually it's made out of um, Scottish Beaumont which is a cross between um, Shetland and Merino sheep and so the yarn is actually it's got the softness of the Merino but it's got the bounce and the lightness and the airiness of a Shetland yarn. So it's a really nice halfway house between the two. Um, they, they sent me, I think it was about 28 grams of yarn, which is never enough. Um, but I wanted to try it out in as many ways as I could. So the first thing I did was actually to knit this little mitt. And I knitted this on... 3.5 millimeter needles and in stocking stitch I got a um, gauge of 21 stitches over 10 centimeters and the fabric for my taste is just a little bit loose I mean you can't really see it you can see I've got a big ladder up the back as well terrible knitting skills um, I was bummed when I finished this that I didn't have enough to do the other mitt. I chose this pattern because it has a little bit of open work and kind of a cable up it. And the pattern was so fun. This is, I forget whether I paid for it or not, but it was Autumnal Mitts by Joe Bangles. And it was so much fun to knit. It's actually designed to be longer and come much further up your arms. I think the only thing that I would change about it is that I would do the ribbing on um, smaller needles. So just so it pulled in a bit. As I say, it's meant to go longer up your arm. So it wouldn't matter so much at a wider part than your arm if the ribbing was a bit loose. But I'd like for it to be a bit tighter around here and around here. I should put it on. There we go. So I think I'm going to undo this one and re-knit it. I, as I say, I was so bummed that I didn't have enough of the sample to knit another one. However, they had brushwork at Yarndale, so I have treated myself and I've bought enough of it to, to make um, mitts 
the other mitt and a hat. So that will be a nice set. Yeah, um, I really like the way that um, the stitch pattern, the yarn shows up the stitch pattern. Really fun. But I wanted to try knitting it at a tighter gauge as well. So I did this swatch on um, 3.25 millimeter needles and got a gauge of 22 stitches over 10 centimeters. So I was getting a DK weight gauge and I think this is actually quite a nice fabric. I mean, it still is, I mean, you could definitely go tighter. It's, it's supposed to be a sport weight. So what, 24 stitches, something like that. Um, but yeah, I really liked this fabric and I think this is probably what I'm gonna um, re-knit the mitts to. The Beaumont, I did the armpit test with this and whilst it's not as smooth as a merino, it's not as prickly as a Shetland yarn. This is um, Jameson and Smith lace weight and it has a slight prickle factor on my neck. I mean I was I was rubbed up against wool from early childhood so a little bit of prickle is not a big deal to me. Um, if you're really sensitive you might feel this but it's not, um, it is sort of more towards the merino end of things. Now I also did a couple of swatches which I have given away and I wove them. Um, and if you want to see those, as I said, pop over to my blog, there's pictures and everything there. But I gave one to a friend who has eczema, um, so that she could wear it for a little while and squidgy it before she decided whether or not she wanted to actually buy the yarn. Um, and she said she didn't think it would be too bad. So if you do have problems with sensitive skin, um, then that might be helpful to know. Um... Yeah. What else do I have to say about brush work? I thought it would be interesting to actually compare it to some of the other yarns that I have in my stash. So I think the other ones, well the other one was obviously the Shetland yarn, so Jameson and Smith and um, um, Jameson's of Shetland. And of course, these are the two two ply jumper weights, so they're definitely finer. Then you know they're more of a four ply than a sport weight, but they're also very definitely pricklier and a little bit more rustic. But the yarn that I thought would be interesting to compare it to is actually Loft, and I haven't actually knitted with this. You can't see it very well because of the poor lighting. I'll just poke it at you like this. <laughs> um, in a side by side comparison, let me get the balls. Stand by. So, when you look at the two, you're probably not going to ever see this because this is just way too dark. They look pretty similar. I think the loft feels like a denser, slightly heavier yarn. But in terms of the actual gauge of the yarn, I think they would knit up in a similar way. And I should... I don't want to break into one of my precious skeins of loft to knit a swatch just as a comparison. You're going to have to wait till I actually knit something with this, by which time brush, brush work will probably have gone and... I'm just waffling now about something I'm not going to do. <laughs> But I think they would knit in a really similar way. If you're looking, if you're looking for um, a British alternative to knit a Brooklyn tweed pattern, then this is probably a good option. I think it's about eight pounds a ball. So whilst it's not super cheap, it is a really nice yarn. Last year when I um, talked about Cornish tin. I said it wasn't something that I would want to rush out and buy. I think this is, it's it's different from the other yarns that um, I think I've squished because of that, because of the softness of it. Okay. So some of the vital statistics 
it's it says pure new wool, but it has on it, it has in it Scottish Beaumont and um, Castle Milk Morrit. Um, and Castle Milk Morrit is kind of a fawn colour, and so the colours this year for brushwork have a warm undertone, which is something I really like. Black are often put um, Gotland in their yarns, which gives them a grey undertone which I don't like, um, and so it's nicer to have something that has a slightly warmer shade to it. This also has alpaca in it, um, which I usually find quite prickly, but I wonder if that's the prickle factor that I'm feeling rather than the Beaumont. Hmm. Yeah, so that's the fibre content. It's a sport weight yarn, and I think the upshot is that I really like it. Um, I think I said about Samite as well that I wanted to rush out and buy a sweeter quantity and I do kind of want a sweeter quantity of this partly because I'd be sad when I can't get it again however I have two sweeter quantities of black yarn in my stash already so I think that you know sheep will produce more yarn and next year blacker will come out with something as nice <laughs> So I'm resisting. And there goes my fairy lights. <laughs> you can see how well I attach those to the wall. I think if you've been on the fence about this, then, then just buy enough for a hat or something. It, it really is a treat. It's a beautiful yarn and I'm going to be bummed when it's all gone. So that's me for today. It's been so nice to sit down and have a chat with you and share a little bit of time. If this is your first time, please come over and say hello in the Ravelry group. It would be lovely to meet you there. And I want to say I'll be back next week and I'm going to try to be back next week. So if you'd like to pop by again, then press subscribe down here and it'd be lovely to see you again. Cheerio!